Hi guys, it's Michelle and today's video is going to be yet another TikTok conspiracy theories video for you guys. Honestly, there's so much crazy shit going on in the world right now, like all over TikTok, all over the news. It's kind of just a lot happening, honestly. But before we get into it, I would like to thank Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. I have never realized how much money I spend on subscriptions and different things that I'm subscribed to that I no longer like participate in until I had rocket money like there are so many like I think I would sign up for the free trial of stuff to like just watch one episode or one movie of something and then I would forget to cancel my subscription and basically completely forget that it exists and I was wasting hundreds of dollars a month just doing that so but rocket money saved me rocket money is the app that you need to save more and manage your money better i love rocket money because you can use it to cancel like i said unwanted subscriptions it's so much easier through rocket money it's like kind of at this point just download it and tell me that there wasn't a subscription that you didn't know about in there i swear you're paying for stuff that you don't even use rocket money has been so helpful to find those things and help me be able to cancel them um so which in turn helps to lower my monthly credit card bills which is great awesome because i want to spend money on stuff that i'm actually using i also like that you can set budgets on rocket money so basically you can kind of analyze your spending habits and create a custom budget that works for you like i tend to retail therapy a little bit <laughs> sometimes i like don't realize how much money i'm actually spending so it's kind of like humbling to like get the rocket money notification being like you've spent 200 more dollars on uber eats this month than you did last like fix it send help rocket money is there to keep you on track and honestly i need it so to save more and spend less definitely join the five million other members that are using rocket money today go to rocketmoney.com slash michelle platty or you could click the link in the description box below get started for free all right without further ado let's get into the tiktok conspiracy theories all right, the first theory i want to talk about has to do with boeing airplanes i feel like this has been very prevalent in the media right now if you um like exist you probably have heard of it and basically we've just been seeing a lot of information about boeing airplanes like falling out of the sky having parts fall apart like mid-air I just feel like a lot of crazy shit has been going on with these specific types of planes for kind of a while but specifically a lot within the last like two to three months. So the conspiracy that I saw on TikTok talked about a man named John Barnett who had worked for Boeing for 32 years until retiring in 2017. John has been taking legal action against Boeing for years now he basically said in some cases substandard parts had been removed from scrap bins and fitted onto planes that were being built to prevent any delays in the production line he also claimed that tests on emergency oxygen systems showed a failure rate of 25 percent meaning one in four masks would not work in an emergency which is obviously quite concerning so i guess john felt like he wasn't aligning with the company anymore morally and he went ahead and began a lawsuit against them. And obviously lawsuits kind of take a while. Basically it was working through the system. And in early March of this year, John Barnett gave a formal deposition in which he was questioned by Boeing's lawyers. He was set to be cross-examined the following weekend by his own legal team. And when he didn't show up for that meeting, questions started to arise. Sadly, John Barnett was found dead in his truck in a hotel parking lot from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Now, a lot of people don't believe that John took his own life. That makes so little sense. Like, you just went through years of suing this company. You're finally getting to the point of the system where, you know, things are kind of moving. Why that? Like, why then? Why before you even talk to, like, your own counsel? It just doesn't make sense. And a lot of people think that there is something seriously dark going on with Boeing, that John knew some stuff and he said some shit in that deposition to Boeing's lawyers that made them be like, this guy has to go because he knows too much. Which is a terrifying thought because I feel like the concept of flying is already scary. We'll probably be checking to make sure planes I go on in the future are not Boeing. The next theory I want to talk about has to do with Lady Gaga. This theory has been a thing for over a decade at this point. It has been kind of swirling around TikTok lately and so I thought I would talk about it because I kind of want to chat what I updated think 
is the truth of this case. So basically there was a girl named Lena Morgana who was an up and coming singer from Staten Island, New York. She was only 19 years old when she started getting her foot in the door. She started working with the producer Rob Fusari who had worked with Destiny's Child and Whitney Houston. So it seemed like she had a lot of potential ahead of her. But sadly on October 4th of 2008, she passed away by allegedly jumping off the roof of the Staten Island Hotel. Lena's family has like since day one refused to believe that their daughter committed suicide. They just felt like she had a whole career ahead of her. She was so excited, like so green and you know, had just like had 24 songs in an album that was set to be released. Just didn't seem like Lena to them to do something like this. And I always do think that that is pretty significant. I mean, like at the end of the day, these are the people who know her the best. And if they are saying that it doesn't make sense and that they think there could have been foul play involved, I just feel like I'm gonna listen to the family. So you might be asking yourself, where the hell does Lady Gaga fit into this? But well, before she was famous, she actually was working as Lena Morgana's backup singer and co-writer. They allegedly like made a bunch of songs together, but only one was ever released under Lena's name. The people around Lena kind of made some shocking claims about Lady Gaga stealing Lena's style. Honestly, it's like kind of uncanny when you look at the pictures, like it is so clear that Gaga was inspired by Lena. Lena's mother even claims that Lady Gaga completely stole her daughter's soul. She says that when Gaga met the Morganas, she was like not flashy at all. Her style was very muted, not outrageous, nothing crazy. But that was 100% like Lena's style in 2007. Like hers was very Gaga or what we think of Gaga now. So Gaga and Lena ended up meeting because Gaga was dating that producer Rob Fusari at the time when he was working with Lena. A lot of people start to wonder if Gaga stealing Lena's like kind of identity overall means that she was potentially involved in her death. Lena's mother claims that not only did Gaga steal like her music style, her fashion sense, like kind of her whole persona, but she also stole Lena's like story, like her backstory to her life. Yes, Lady Gaga kind of presents struggling as a child and had a very tough childhood, but according to Lena's mother, that is not true. And she grew up going to the same school as Paris Hilton. And she grew up with money and everything that like Gaga had said was actually more relevant to Lena's home story. Like it was almost like she completely stole Lena's personality and her mother to this day even says that she feels like Lady Gaga holds on to Lena's soul and she just wants her to release it. I think also people came up with a theory that Gaga was maybe involved in Lena's death because in the paparazzi music video, which was a year after Lena passed away, they show Gaga like getting pushed off of a balcony, which people think is representative of Lady Gaga or the Illuminati or the music producers, whoever you want to believe it is killing Lena. I don't know if I necessarily think that this is true in the sense of that Gaga was involved in her death or anything. And like the family has never claimed that. It's weird to me that she would just like completely like take such inspiration from this person. And she probably worked closely with her. So like after her death, like didn't, like wouldn't you think that she would be like, and I owe all of, so much of my inspiration to like my dear friend who passed away like really sadly and abruptly like, Right? Like, I just feel like that's kind of the human thing to do in that kind of scenario. I don't know. That's just kind of my perspective on it. And to this day, Gaga has never spoken about it and never spoken about Lena publicly or the influence that Lena had on her style. None of it. So I kind of want to hear your guys' thoughts on this because, I mean, I've always liked Lady Gaga a lot, but like that does kind of rub me the wrong way. All right, the next theory I want to talk about, I think is kind of I don't think that this is true, but it is about Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez. This story just doesn't have a lot of evidence or like actual proof behind it. It's just a lot of hearsay, which I will say it's still worth mentioning. I think if someone says like this celebrity did this and like whatever, basically Justin Bieber was allegedly in a Bible study group where he opened up about how when he was young, him and his then girlfriend Selena Gomez became pregnant. The quote unquote Hollywood elites forced them to get an abortion and also ruined their relationship. I don't know how how much I think that this is true. I actually think the next part of the series kind of makes a little bit more sense, 
Um, but other people actually speculate that Selena and Justin actually did secretly have a child and that child is actually Selena's sister, Gracie. Basically it's theorized that when Gracie was born in order to protect Selena and Justin's reputation, Selena's mother jumped in and agreed to raise Gracie as her own child. I think that this is kind of more interesting and makes a bit more sense just because like we don't really know anything like in for sure detail about like the Hollywood elite, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. But this is like kind of a common concept overall, I think. There's people not only in real life, but I've seen it time after time in TV shows. A mother and daughter, the daughter who's like a teenager has a baby and then the mom raises it as her own. And like these kids go through their whole lives thinking that they're sisters, but their sister is actually their mom. It's it's happened. Very interesting theory. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I want to hear your guys' thoughts on it because it kind of weirds me out. All right, the next theory I want to talk about honestly scares me. Actually, the next three things that we're going to talk about are all things that I'm going to have to say right here. All of this is alleged. Like, I don't know nothing about nothing, all right? The first one I want to talk about is this girl who uploaded a video about being followed by the Illuminati. Go, so, were you taking pictures of us? And immediately she's like, no, this is what's going on. And she grabs her phone and she's like shaking, like trembling. You can't even look at her phone. She's shaking so much. So she goes, I'm being stalked and followed. And she pulls out her phone and she starts showing me her camera roll. And her whole camera roll is like zoomed in pictures of like random cars. And she goes, the elite sent people after me. She's like, sent people after me. She goes, I was on trial for OJ Simpson. And she starts showing me pictures in a courtroom, zoomed in pictures of OJ Simpson. She, her passenger seat has piles of like documents, like redacted like statements and stuff like that, like court documents pictures of his glove, like all of this stuff. So basically she claimed that she ran into a woman who was claiming to be followed by the Illuminati because she was on the OJ Simpson trial like jury. She also claimed that a quote popular family is having the Illuminati hunt down and kill her. And I think most people believe that like if this story is true and like if this woman is telling the truth, if this girly is telling the truth, like who knows, that, like that family would be the Kardashians. I assume like that is the most associated family with the OJ Simpson trial. Obviously Robert Kardashian defended OJ Simpson in 1995, but the reason it doesn't really make sense to me is because the Kardashian family like overall have spoken out against OJ Simpson many times. Kris Jenner and Nicole Brown Simpson were very good friends at the time of her death and Robert defending OJ was really weird for like Chris. This is her ex-husband defending a man who probably murdered one of her best friends. So it just doesn't really make sense to me that they would want the Illuminati going after this girl who was allegedly on the jury of the OJ Simpson trial 30 years ago. The only thing that I could think of is that there is a pretty interesting conspiracy theory that Robert Kardashian actually helped cover up OJ Simpson's crime. It's the only thing that I can think makes even the slightest amount of sense, but we'll talk about why I actually feel like it kind of still doesn't make sense later. But basically to date the murder weapon for the Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman case was never found. Like I said, Robert Kardashian and OJ Simpson had been friends for years. They were family friends. They would all hang out together years prior to the murders. In a way, like when you're looking back on it, it's no surprise that Robert Kardashian defended OJ Simpson, but it is actually kind of strange when you look at some of the facts, which is that Robert was no longer practicing law and had never practiced criminal law. He had his license reinstated just so that he could join OJ's defense team. I mean, I guess you could say if you really believe that your friend didn't do it, like you would want to help them out, but he's not even like a criminal lawyer. So it just makes no sense why. So the day after the murders, OJ Simpson flew back from Chicago. After being contacted by the police, it was found out that he had flown out the night before to attend a celebrity golf tournament. When he returned home, Robert Kardashian met him outside his house and is seen handing Robert a Louis Vuitton garment bag. So something that was overlooked by the police and like kind of in general at that point, because it was only realized later when journalists were going through their footage that they noticed that this exchange of this garment bag happened. They brought attention to it to the police. The police basically questioned Robert Kardashian and asked him for the bag and he claimed that he lost it. It's widely believed that some sort of evidence in that bag leads OJ directly to the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. And that potentially Robert destroyed the evidence and it kind of adds up in the sense of, you know, maybe that's why he 
joined the defense team. I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily think that's true, but regardless, let's say that is true. Play pretend. Why would the Kardashians be caring about this 30 years later? Like, just theoretically, this particular jury member who's saying that she's being followed by the Illuminati knows something more about Robert Kardashian and OJ Simpson's connection. Kind of, I'm just like, why would the Kardashians really care? Like I said, have publicly spoken out against OJ Simpson, but also Robert Kardashian has been dead for 20 years. So like you can't, you know, get in trouble. Why do this? Well, but like, who knows? Maybe someone else was involved. Either way, this would freak me the fuck out and I actually think it would send me into a spiral. But maybe another famous family like has ties with OJ and doesn't want some information to get out but either way it's creepy as hell is this girl lying is she just like crazy i guess we'll probably never know but honestly something about the story just felt really eerie to me that it's just so specific you know i don't know i don't know what i think of it i haven't like fully decided but it's weird all right the next like things kind of go hand in hand and they all kind of also go hand in hand with Quiet On Set. I did a whole video on Quiet On Set if you want to watch it. It's a very interesting documentary about like the dark side of children's TV shows like like child actors like the dark stuff that they had to go through. This has been something we've been talking about for a really long time but it all is kind of connecting with what's happening right now with P. Diddy. A lot of conspiracy theories have been swirling around P. Diddy and I'm kind of gonna try to explain it the best way that I can. The basis of what we know is essentially that Sean Combs, AKA P. Diddy, his houses have been raided by the feds due to some allegations and civil lawsuits that he is facing about sex trafficking. I've got this all started was his ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura filed a lawsuit in 2023 alleging that she was trafficked and abused by Sean on many occasions over the past 10 years. So Cassandra ended up signing to Diddy's label in 2005 when she was just 19 years old and Diddy was 37. Cassandra claims that the abuse patterns started right away. Rodney Jones, AKA Lil Rod also came forward recently filing a lawsuit against Diddy claiming that he was forced to engage in relations with sex workers that Diddy had hired. He also claimed that Diddy himself had harassed, drugged, and threatened him for more than over a year. The lawsuit continued that Diddy would regularly host trafficking parties with underage women and illegal drugs, and it implies that the record label executives were paid off to kind of look the other way. Which I guess you have to kind of expect there are people that are doing that in Hollywood. I mean, we saw it in Quiet On Set. We know that there are people who were defending JIT predators, so it's not surprising to me that there are, that these record label execs were able to be paid off to look away from all of this. And now since then, several other women have come forward claiming to be abused by Diddy as well. Basically, I don't really see a way of him getting out of this. I don't know. There has been a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding Diddy and Michael Jackson that I found to be very interesting. I don't know anything about Michael Jackson and I'm not saying that this isn't true. I saw this TikTok that was very interesting. Theories that P. Diddy has connections to Michael Jackson's death. No way. And it's known that he hates the industry. There was a video of him at an award ceremony. They try to fuck up his career because Michael Jackson basically owned over 50% of Sony records. These guys work really hard at their craft. The companies take advantage of them. They never thought that this performer myself would outthink them. I own half of Sony's publishing and I'm leaving them. They're very angry at me because of it, but- How is this connected to P. Diddy, right? P. Diddy, he had a head of security, was a guy that any employees that P. Diddy has, if you ever get pulled over in California or in Miami, to call this guy, Fahim, and he'll take care of it. He'll make any problem, any police trouble disappear. So he has power in the, in the police. Michael Jackson died in 2009. That guy, Fahim, in 2008, he graduated from college. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in real estate and business and had no experience in security or anything like that. So how is a guy who just graduated college the head of security already for Michael Jackson, the biggest music artist of all time? Because he was there at Michael Jackson's testimony and he was the second person on the scene whenever Michael Jackson died. Well, a lot of people do believe that Michael Jackson was falsely outed of essaying children because he was trying to expose the Illuminati and the actual people who were trafficking children. 
and what was truly going on in the music industry and he was trying to expose everything. I don't know what I believe because like I don't want to take away from the fact that you know people claim if Michael Jackson abused them like I'm not trying to take away from that but I do definitely think that this is a very interesting theory because from what we did see of Michael Jackson, he was very much trying to always speak out against the music industry, against Sony, against the Illuminati. To this day, his entire family like believes he was murdered by the Illuminati slash the music industry for trying to expose what was going on. And now that this has come out about Diddy, it seems like a lot of what Michael Jackson like claimed was happening was actually happening. And that is, definitely something scary i mean i don't know i go back and forth with michael jackson theories and like theories about his death being like an inside job by the illuminati or if it was really just an accident by conrad murray since living in la i've met some fucking weird people and i've met this one guy his family are like billionaires or whatever and I was talking, like, he was asking what I do, like, for work. And I was telling him, like, I make YouTube videos about conspiracy theories and stuff. And he asked what the most interesting theory was. And I was like, I think that Michael Jackson was murdered by the Illuminati. And he goes, oh, my dad's friends with Conrad Murray. So, like, no, he, he definitely just, like, did it on accident. You know, he was going to get the drug somewhere. So I, I don't know. I also don't know if I trust this man as far as I could fucking throw him. Found it interesting and it's definitely noted. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this, but kind of coinciding with that, I want to talk about Corey Feldman, who was a child actor from The Goonies, The Lost Boys, and so much more. But he has been speaking out against all of this for years. Corey Feldman is someone I really thought of after the Quiet On Set documentary came out because I knew he had kind of a similar experience, specifically him and his good friend, Corey Haim. Corey Feldman released a documentary called My Truth Documentary and he basically said in that documentary that Corey Haim confided in him and told him that when he was 13 on the set of Lucas, a 19 year old Charlie Sheen essayed him. Charlie Sheen has denied these claims but it seems like many people are claiming that they were told that by Corey Haim. Unfortunately Corey Haim like can't speak for himself about this anymore because he sadly passed away in 2010. He struggled with the abuse that he suffered from in Hollywood and this in turn led to drug addiction and struggles with drugs. He sadly passed away from pneumonia in 2010. But Corey Feldman has always been like carrying Corey Haim's story with him, which I think is really admirable because he obviously, like I said, can't speak for himself anymore, but he clearly faced a lot of traumatic things in his childhood. And Corey Feldman claims that Charlie Sheen was only the beginning of Corey Haim's childhood trauma. Basically both Corey's experienced a lot of trauma and abuse in the industry and the adults in the situation, they would basically tell them and convince them that this was perfectly normal and the older men and the younger boys would engage in these relations. It's just like what happened in Hollywood. It's just what the guys do, which is just honestly heartbreaking and disgusting, obviously. Charlie Sheen in general kind of had a lot of shitty behavior that like checks out with a lot of the allegations against him. For example, Corey Feldman actually spoke about this recently when he gave his opinions on Drake Bell's allegations against Brian Peck. Corey basically claims that the reason that Brian Peck was able to continue working with children and working on sets was because Charlie Sheen was the person who protected him. It is absolutely ridiculous that Brian Peck was accused, convicted, and went to jail for assaulting a child and then is was able to still work on sets with children after that. Like, absolutely nuts but it's honestly because charlie sheen like hired him to be a dialogue coach on two and a half men and anger management and he kind of just like took him under his wing which is gross obviously it's believed that that is the only reason that brian peck's career still continued kind of untouched it's just very terrifying to think that like you know there's people in the industry who like charlie sheen and like who the fuck else knows who has a lot of power and money and are protecting these people i can't imagine any other reason for wanting to protect them rather than they are also like that as well like it's just it's very very disgusting and very horrifying i don't know i just feel like this is all coming out so fast and with quiet on set like i just think so much more is going to 
come out about this and people trying to cover this up but now that like the diddy thing is happening the quiet on set the fact that i was on hbo max like so much has just been coming out that i just feel like at this point it's like a can of worms you're not going to be able to put that shit back in. I think way more is going to arise about not only actors who we love that were abused, but actors who knew that there were children getting abused and didn't do anything about it. And that is, I think that's one of the scariest parts about this whole thing is like finding out there are so many people who just stayed quiet about this. It's honestly disturbing. That is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of these conspiracy theories. And thank you again to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. And that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram and subscribe for new videos every week. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.